Dear New York coming to you live from our living rooms. We just want to send some positivity to all of our friends down at the LGBT Center here in New York City. We wish we could be there helping to support you on 13th Street, but even though we can't be, we are still sending you all the good energy we can. Let's hear it for the center. Let's go, 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 Hello, and welcome to Garden Party, the center's annual kickoff to Pride. Like everyone else, we've gone virtual this year, so I'm not greeting you from a fabulous pier on the west side, but I am nonetheless thrilled that you have joined us to be a part of our community and this long-standing celebration about the importance of connection, now more than ever. Tonight, we are excited to bring you some incredible performances, something new for Garden Party. But we're also sticking to our culinary roots and have featured recipes for cocktails, mocktails, and delicious bites at gaycenter.org slash garden party. Thank you to our wonderful Garden Party Culinary Council, Diageo, and PepsiCo for providing these recipes and for supporting the center's work as always. Standing together and standing strong is something the LGBT community has a lot of experience with. When our building closed in March in response to the pandemic, we knew it wasn't an option to stop providing the services and programs that our community relies on as a lifeline. Our staff was prepared for the closing and sprung into action quickly to bring all of our groups and services online, from youth support to HIV prevention to counseling and groups. And it's critical that we did this because since the building closed, we've seen a 40% increase in the demand for services like substance use treatment and mental health counseling. People desperately need us during this difficult time. And I'm so proud of everything our team at the center did to make sure that we could meet that need and more. I'm also proud of the LGBT movement for standing with the Black Lives Matter movement and making space this year during Pride, especially to show that we are part of this anti-racist movement, that Black Lives Matter and Black Trans Lives Matter. The movement for justice is also our movement and it is all of our responsibility. We're facing two plagues right now, COVID-19 and systemic racism. It often seems like too much to bear. And I want you to know that I and the center see you. We acknowledge what you're going through and we're here to help. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us for support and for guidance on how you can get involved. In fact, throughout the night, our friends will be asking you to take action, to remember to vote tomorrow in the New York primary, to fill out the census so that all LGBTQ people are counted, to preserve our stories through a special center archive project, to stand up as activists in the fight against racism and support queer folks and queer and trans people of color and even to make contributions to the center to help us provide the life-saving services that we do. Taking action is something you can do to feel engaged and empowered. It will make you feel good, I promise, just as it feels good to be with you all here tonight, even virtually, and to know that we might not be together physically, but we'll always be together in community. So check out these recipes, whip up something delightfully refreshing and settle in for a fabulously queer celebration of pride. Thank you for being here and for supporting the center. Hey everybody, it's me, Leah Delaria, talking to you from the comfort of my own living room, because let's face it, here in this age of the new normal, we can't have these great big functions that we used to have there at the center. So uh, here we are, no pride, but we're still gonna celebrate pride because all I got is pride bitches and I know you do too. So I've been a huge supporter of the center for years because I'm old. And the center has been doing great works within our community for decades. This is why I always support them. This is why I'm here to support them now. And this is why I am asking you, begging you, wanting you desperately to donate. Anything will help to the center. We need them. And while you think about what it is you're gonna donate, I'm gonna give you a little gift 
a little time, a little relaxation. I'm gonna take you back to a gentler time when people used to listen to great swinging music. This is my favorite Gershwin tune, my favorite Gershwin tune, and I'm gonna be doing it with my great friend and queer ally, Emmett Cohen and his trio. He has Kyle Poole on drums and Russell Hall on bass and Emmett Cohen on piano. Here's a little Gershwin for y'all. Holding hands till midnight Neat the starry sky It's nice work if you get it And you can get it if you try Strolling with the one girl Sighing sigh after sigh It's nice work if you can get it, you can get it if you try. Just imagine someone waiting at the cottage door where two hearts become one. Who could ask for anything more? Loving one who loves you and then taking that vow. It's nice work if you can get it and if you get it won't you tell me folks. Thanks everyone for coming online tonight and hello. I'm honored to be here this evening for the virtual garden party celebration for Pride and the wonderful LGBTQ plus community, but also to lend my voice and to lend my support for the Black Indigenous people of color community who are fighting for equality in the face of violence and police brutality now and every day. Last year I was honored by the center at Center Dinner and it really meant so much to me. The center is a place of hope, of community, and it brings us all together. I have been to the center and seen how much this work means for the community. I've seen how important it is that the center maintains the support that they provide. You know, it is odd right now during Pride to be together virtually, right? When we are usually gathered in the city, a city that comes alive with rainbow colors and rainbow flags. Let's remember, however, that any Pride march that we partake in or 
the rights and freedoms that we enjoy at this time, they are a direct result of protesting, of rioting and fighting for these abilities. In the summer of 1969, our black, brown, trans and queer family led the fight at Stonewall for days on end against police brutality they faced and encountered every day. As I mentioned on air at the beginning of this Pride Month, America was founded through protests, the oppressed fighting for freedoms and liberties they had been and are denied. Sadly, today seems to be not much different. Trans people of color, especially black trans women, are the targets of violence because of who they are. This must stop. The LGBTQ community is stronger than any party or march, and we must show up for Black Indigenous people of color now, more than ever, and stand with them. We show our strength in supporting one another and reaching out when we need help. We can show our support by amplifying Black Indigenous people of color voices and by donating to organizations who provide the direct help, advocacy, and support the community needs right now. The center is one of those organizations. They are here for all of you during this time, even if you are feeling isolated or scared. You can call or access support online at gaycenter.org. And if you are in a position to support the center's work, which is provided seven days a week, consider making a special contribution. By donating tonight, you are helping LGBTQ people get the help and support that they need, that they need right now. If you have the ability to give, click the donate button now and know that you are saving a life. The LGBTQ community is strong and we have the power now more than ever to band together, support one another, and have pride in who we are. Wow, thank you, Leah, for that wonderful performance and for supporting the center unconditionally for so many years. And thank you, Don, for that important message about how we should stand up together against violence towards our queer and trans, black and people of color communities. We appreciate your voice and your leadership in today's media and beyond. As Lee and Don mentioned, you can donate this evening at gayscenter.org slash donate. In addition to donating, we're going to hear about a few other ways that we can all make an impact right now in the fight for equality. One of which I want to introduce. As our city endures the ongoing COVID-19 health crisis, the center knows that our daily lived experience is more important than ever to honor. These everyday struggles and triumphs are always the focus of the Center Archive, which is why our archivist has created a new project to collect stories, photographs, drawings, poetry, and more that represent the impact of the pandemic and quarantine on our beloved community. The LGBT Quarantine Archive Project is ongoing, and tonight we want to share with you one of the many submissions that we've received. Hey y'all, it's Jacob Tobia, and I'm so stoked to be here with you virtually this evening to narrate this submission that the center received for their LGBTQ Quarantine Archive Project. This submission comes to us from a gentleman named Peter Robinson. Peter writes, My life partner of 36 years and I have separate living quarters in NYC. Although they're not far apart, we for years have enjoyed visiting each other in our homes. We call them date nights. During the present pandemic, we've been staying in our respective homes and video chatting during this crisis. We probably talk more now than we have in the past five years. So the good news is that the pandemic has opened up our relationship for more communication. The bad news is that we miss the closeness of love and being in each other's arms and beds. In our commitment of 36 years together, Lord knows we have weathered worse and with our love can hopefully weather this one also. But ultimately, we've had a great life together and love each other deeply. All right, well, first off, happy 36th anniversary to you, Peter and Gary. Um, 36 years is a very uh, impressive commitment, one that I don't know I would be able to make. And I just think that 36 years of queer love is 
super special. Um, and I hope after hearing this, y'all have been inspired to submit your own history and your own story to the LGBTQ Quarantine Archives Project. Um, if you wanna submit your own video um, or story or written thing or song, um, you can do so on the center's website. Uh, and I hope that you'll consider doing it because it's so important, especially right now, um, when we are living through history, when we are living through uh, a, a really important moment in civil rights when we are living through um, a really important moment in the history of LGBTQ people. Uh, it's so important to preserve our history uh, and to document what's going on. So I hope you'll consider submitting something um, and stay safe, everybody, okay? And stay in the streets. Hey, everybody. I'm Dr. Kristen Tugman, and I'm so happy to be here representing Prudential as the presenting sponsor of this year's Garden Party. Prudential is also so proud to be a supporter of the Center for more than 20 years. As we gather here virtually for Pride this year, we want to focus on what is happening and what is possible. Since closing their doors in March due to COVID-19, the Center has turned all of its services to remote, providing the crucial care and support that the community needs now more than ever. Here at Prudential, we're doing everything we can to support and be a resource to the LGBT community. We're working diligently to reduce the stigma of mental health in the workplace, to encourage employees to seek help when they need it, and educate employers, like many of the sponsors of tonight's event, on the warning signs of depression, anxiety, and other conditions that can often be mistaken for performance issues. Doing so helps create a more inclusive, supportive, and productive work environment. Again, we're so proud to be here supporting the Center, Happy Pride. This is Assembly Member Danny O'Donnell bringing greetings to the garden party. I want to thank Glenda and the board for the fabulous work that they do. They've always been a home for me and my career, and they serve an important role in our community. We've done a lot of good. I've passed Marriage Equality. I've passed the Dignity for All Students Act. I've passed the ban on the gay and panic defense, but the truth is there's still more work to be done including finally getting ready for walking while trans. I love the garden party. I'm sorry I'm not there. I wish you all happy pride. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Marty Gold Cummings. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm honored to be celebrating pride with all of you at the center. I moved to New York on June 23rd, 2005, at the age of 17 years old, just graduating high school, right off a farm. So I didn't know a lot of people like myself, but the center was a safe space that I could learn about our community and meet other members of our community. And I am forever grateful for the services they provide to LGBTQIA people. Stonewall was 51 years ago, and it was a direct result of police brutality. This pride, I want us to remember that there are so many injustices still happening. We need justice for Tony McDade, Nina Pop, Laylene Palenko, we need justice for Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. Black Lives Matter and Black Trans Lives Matter. Let's get to work and fight for every member of our LGBTQIA plus community. I love you. And I'm so grateful for this community and the center. Be safe. Hello everyone, happy Pride. My name is Aaron Sanders and I'm the Outreach and Organizing Coordinator at the LGBT Community Center here in New York City. I'm so excited to be here with you all for this wonderful event. At the center, we have a statewide initiative called Rise Out, where we work together with over 40 organizations to pass comprehensive laws and policies. But just as important, we work with everyday New Yorkers to ensure that the most marginalized voices are being heard in our community. This is a really critical moment in our history. And it is for that reason that we must help to ensure that all black lives are treated fairly. And this includes Black trans lives. It is for this reason that we're happy to support Vocal New York as they demand justice and accountability. Are you interested in getting involved and want to learn more? Visit us at gaycenter.org forward slash advocacy where you can learn more and get involved. I wanna thank you for all that you do. Happy Pride. Hi, my name is Juwanda Williams. I use he, him pronouns. And first I wanna say thank you so much at the center for creating this opportunity and space for us to have this conversation. Um, again, I'm the director of organizing at an organization called Vocal New York, a statewide membership grassroots organization committed to building power among directly impacted people to end the AIDS epidemic, mass incarceration, homelessness, and the failed racist and classist drug war. And right now we see across the US, the people have risen to call for a paradigm shift 
What they're saying is we must defund the police departments across this country and here in New York City, we must defund the NYPD because policing is inherently racist, it is inherently classist, and police happen to participate in a system that they cannot be full, fully good people in. So. What we're saying, what the people are calling for is a paradigm shift. It's about safety. How do we create safety for not just some communities, but for all communities, including LGBTQ communities of color, especially. So tomorrow, thousands of us are headed to City Hall in New York City to call on Mayor Bill de Blasio and the Speaker of the City Council, Corey Johnson, to make sure that they reduce the NYPD budget by at least one billion dollars before the city budget is due to be finalized by June 30th. So we want folks to join us at that space and say to the world and to our elected officials that policing has failed us for far too long and that we have to do something different. And that difference means investing in money, that money into housing, healthcare, education, and social services. Because true safety is created when we humanize our people. And LGBTQ people know that the most, and we know that most intimately. When we are taken care of, our communities thrive. So let's do that on a grand scale, and let's say to all of the powers that are that are, that are fixed against us, that we have had enough and that we have the power and the understanding of what it means to be fully human, human and to demand a system that fights for all of us. Hello, I'm Olin Wynn Ritzenberg, and I'm the Youth Education Services Coordinator at the Center. I'm honored to be here tonight for our garden party celebration. Every year, the Center offers a variety of scholarships to support youth that access the Center's services. All applicants must be 23 years old or under and have participated in the Center's services and programming as a member and or client within the past year. One of the scholarships the Center has to offer is the FAB Scholarship, which stands for Finish a Bachelor. This scholarship, made possible by the contribution of Jeffrey Sharlock, recognizes that many students experience barriers midway in their education and aims to support individuals who have already achieved milestones in their academic career, and yet who would otherwise not be able to finish their degree in a timely manner without financial aid. Recipients of the FAB Scholarship receive $2,000. Before we announce the winner of this year's scholarship, we have a few pieces to share from past recipients of the FAB scholarship and how much it has impacted their lives. Here to narrate those pieces are center staff members, Natasha Jones and myself. Natasha, and I'm going to be reading a thank you piece to Jeffrey Sharlock from Eddie. Eddie writes, as a former recipient of the center's FAB scholarship, I am genuinely happy to have the opportunity to recount the impact that this award has had on my life and to thank the benefactor and the organization that have made it all possible. In 2016, I faced a rather difficult time in my personal life that also impacted my ability to pay my undergraduate tuition. And I was not really sure that I would even be considered for an award like this. However, the wonderful news I received a few weeks after applying truly surprised me. And the scholarship substantially helped me afford the completion of my bachelor's degree. Ever since, I've continued to put my best efforts into making the most out of what I've been blessed with. And I'm proud to say today that I recently graduated with a STEM master's degree and gained considerable work experience that makes me a competitive candidate in the workforce and allows me to maintain my momentum with success. With this, I give my sincere gratitude to Jeffrey Sharlack for his generous sponsorship and for the great friendship we've harbored till this day. I am also especially thankful for the staff of the center, for the constant care and support they provided me with as I was growing into adulthood and facing obstacles that many of our LGBT youth face today. Jimena writes, five years ago, I came to the center feeling desperate. My dysphoria had turned into regular panic attacks and I was consumed with fear of admitting I was trans. I had neither the language or the support necessary to understand what was happening. The folks at the center not only heard me, but invested in me. Five years ago, I was paying community college one credit at a time with zero financial aid. I am now a Columbia class of 2020 graduate. It was thanks to the center and the folks supporting them like Jeff Sharlock that I managed to graduate. Within those five years, I became homeless for a time. The Finish a Bachelor's Scholarship was crucial to me finding a permanent home. Thank you to the center, Jeff Sharlock, and to all those who contribute to this very valuable work. Amazing. 
Thank you, Olin and Natasha, for sharing those endearing messages from past FAB recipients and for sharing their gratitude for Jeffrey Sherlock and the scholarship with all of us. I'm incredibly excited and honored to be able to announce this year's recipient of the FAB Scholarship. Congratulations to Tiffany. They will be entering their junior year at Binghamton University studying theater. If you're curious to learn more about the youth scholarships the center offers, head to gaycenter.org slash scholarship. At a time when folks might feel isolated or alone, music can be the perfect antidote, even just for a few minutes. Our friends at the Gay Men's Chorus know this well, and we're excited to debut with you all tonight a performance that they have been working hard on to lift up our spirits and look towards a brighter day ahead. Please enjoy this performance from over 100 members of New York City's Gay Men's Chorus, all from different locations singing together as one.
Hi, my name is Leo Sheng, and I am excited and honored to be here tonight to celebrate Pride virtually with you all and to celebrate and honor the work and contributions and services that the center provides to our community and continues to do so during this massive global shift and during such uncertain and challenging times for our community. Pride to me at its core is about resistance and resilience. It's about honoring and celebrating the contributions of so many black and brown, queer and trans women who really led the movement for queer liberation and the black and brown, queer and trans women who continue to lead the movement. Um, it's about wanting to continue that momentum and create a safe space for queer folks, queer people of color and, and black and brown trans and queer people as well. Um, it's about fighting back and fighting as a community. Speaking of community, to me, is it's about having people who see you and who celebrate you and make you feel seen, heard, valued, validated, empowered, whether that is uh, two people in your life, 20, 200. It's about having people who you feel safe with and feel understand you to the best of their ability and will fight for you. Chosen family is such a vital, vital piece of so many people's lives, so many queer people's lives. I think right now, especially as we are physically distancing, you know, staying in our homes, having chosen family, people you can reach out to who may not be immediate family members is, is so important. It saves people, literally, helps people feel seen and heard in a way that their family might not, their, their immediate family might not see and hear them. It's amazing to see so many people who are able to celebrate pride with their chosen family and find people who see them and love them and accept them and embrace them. I am here tonight again to celebrate and uplift the, the incredible work that the center has been doing. We are in such uncharted territories in terms of organizing and activism and, and service, social services um, and providing support looks so different now. And so to see them continue working and chugging along and providing support to our community is just, it's incredible. Hello everyone. My name is Kaylin Allen and over the last couple of weeks, we have seen the continuation of a movement that has affected black people for centuries. And enough is enough. It is now so imperative that we are inclusive in our efforts and are acting as champions of change. We must not let up. We must always stay persistent about our freedoms and our rights. If you would like to get involved, just text BLM or Kaylin to 69866. This will opt you into an automatic link that will link you to the call to actions provided by the center. Thank you. For a quarter century, Thousands have taken on the challenge of biking 275 miles from Boston to New York City in support of the center's fight to end AIDS. Now, the LGBTQ community needs your creativity, effort, time, and talent to ensure the continued access to all the center's crucial services. From remote mental health counseling and substance use treatment, to support for the LGBTQ youth as they navigate the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. On Saturday, July 18th, Cycle for the Cause is going beyond the road to meet you in your homes and hometowns, inviting anyone from anywhere to take the 275 Challenge, dedicating 275 minutes to fundraising for the LGBTQ community. Whether you raise $5 while cycling the boroughs of New York City, $500 while registering voters in LA, or $5,000 while sewing masks in Toronto, the LGBTQ community has risen to many challenges. We know the power of solidarity, and we want you to join the family. Take the challenge. Sign up today at cycleforthecause.org. Before our final performance of the evening, I wanted to express the center's utmost gratitude for the many people who made Garden Party possible, starting with all of our sponsors, especially our presenting sponsor, Prudential, and our lead partner, PepsiCo. 
Thank you all very much for your generous support and help to make tonight's program possible and for supporting our work through both the best and the most challenging times. We really appreciate it. Thank you to our wonderful restaurant partners who donated the recipes and time to make Garden Party amazing. Even after tonight's program, their delicious recipes can still be found at gaycenter.org slash garden party. And the next time you don't feel like cooking, why not support them by ordering takeout or delivery through their websites linked on the Garden Party website. And of course, thank you to all our speakers and performers who are part of tonight's program. Your presence and performances provided just the ray of light that we need right now to leave us feeling hopeful, strong, powerful, and proud. And to all of you who were able to donate tonight, thank you. The center's work is more critical than ever, and we will continue to provide the vital services our community needs now remotely, and together when we can gather again at 208 West 13th Street. Finally, I'm excited to introduce our last performance of the evening from none other than Justin Vivian Bond, the incomparable singer, songwriter, author, painter, performance artist, and actor. Following V's performance, please make sure to join our fabulous dance party with DJ B. Bari. A Zoom link to join the PepsiCo virtual dance floor is included in today's confirmation email that you received. I'll see you there, and thanks again for joining the center this evening. Take it away, V. Hello, I'm Justin Vivian Bond, also known as your Auntie Glam, and I'm here in the House of Whimsy in upstate New York with my friends Nathan Carrera and David Sukovsky, and we are delighted to be asked to perform a song for you tonight for the virtual Garden Party Gala for the Center. Uh, it's a wild year in the middle of a pandemic and the middle of a racial uprising in the United States, which is long overdue. And uh, we're uh, here for it, darlings. And um, we're going to do a song for you tonight that was written by a legendary trans woman from San Francisco by the name of Bambi Lake. And this song is called Viking Dan. <laughs> Sometimes he slept in my room on Church Street. When I lived with Hibiscus and the Angels of Life, I hung my walls with 1920s beaded gowns, and Viking was off somewhere strolling downtown. On my bed, I hung a tent of lavender chiffon. With this classic Teutonic lithe young body, long blonde hair and light beard, he'd stare out the window, gazing up at the sky. Anyone. This classic Teutonic lie, young 
you rise up be fabulous no one loves you more than your anti-glam ciao my darlings <laughs>